This video is on the Sony RMBR300 and the pros to use it with your home studio. Um, so this is the unit right here. As you can see, this guy, um, it used to be $2,000 but you can get it on eBay for like 500 bucks that so you probably wouldn't be here if you didn't know that by now. If you're lucky, you can get it for 300. Um, it only takes two connections. Um, actually, you could use the Visca RS422 if you wanted, but I use the RS232C. Uh, really all you need is one cable and power to stick into there. So power. one cross um, RS-232 cable and any one of the compatible cameras. So all of the 1080s, some of the 4Ks, but um, this is discontinued, this is discontinued. The reason you can get you know, a $2,000 PTZ camera and a $2,000 controller for, you know, 400 bucks for both or 600 bucks for both if you're, if you're lucky you can get it for 400. So you just put it in the in and you're going to use the same crossover cable to go from the out to the in on another camera. Um, and as soon as you do that, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, as soon as you do it, you stick it in, this will reset and if it doesn't reset, you just hit the off button and on, and it'll blink. As soon as it's done blinking, it'll be ready. This is optical, so it is super smooth. So whenever you press it, it does a very smooth job. Oh, this is why it's not working. You need to put power into here. So it just figured it out. Look how smooth that is. It's just super smooth. And it's fast if you want it to be fast. Um, and then, just to show you real quick, you can add up to seven of these cameras to control seven of them and set presets for them. There's power for that guy. <coughs> Lulu, stop. Dad's trying to do a video, Lulu. Could you please be quiet? Okay, there's N, RS-232 on that. I just put it in the N. This is another crossover cable. I'll show you that in a moment. These cables are a little bit hard to find, so I'll show you a good spot for them. The out on there, and if you see this, this is blinking. So as soon as you stuck that other one in there, this will reset automatically. And if it doesn't, you just turn it on and off. Um, so let's let's try it out. Here's number one, camera one, left, right. Camera two, left, right. Up, zoom in and out, isn't that nifty? On camera one, up, zoom in and out, can't really see it, but I'll zoom in and out on this other one for you. Um, this is the one I'm using. I'm showing this one as an um, uh, example, but I have one of these same cameras right above coming down showing this. So I'm on five and zoom in or zoom out, zoom in, left, right. You can go super slow if you want or you can go fast and you can set the PTZs to remember fast too. So if you hit one, they can go super fast. And you can set these prior. So every time you do it, you can set it up to go um, as fast as you want, or remember as many presets as you want. It also remembers, which is really, really cool, 
um, the brightness value and the RGB value. So if you have uh, you know five different cameras and they have different RGB values, you can set it up to where as soon as you hit that button, it automatically does that work for you. So everything's already set up before you start the video. Like this one, this one's live. Obviously you heard the dog barking, but um, so to set a preset, all you have to do is hit pre hold preset and then hit the button. So one, we're gonna have this number one camera push over here. And then on two, we're gonna have it come over to the other side and look down. So we're gonna hold preset two. So when you're in a video, all you have to do is hit one if you want it to go to that preset, or two if you want it to go to the second preset. And it is super smooth and fast, as you saw on the other one. Um, other things that it, you can do in here, it has a backlight uh, feature. You can turn the panel light off if you want and just have the blues. Um, one push auto, balance, auto white balance works with most cameras. You just set the setting in the cameras, and it's pretty nifty. Uh, you can also do automatic, or uh, you can set manual focus on this too. So uh, I'll show you an example on this other camera. Number five. <laughs> Here's number five. Um, so if I hit manual, and then I can shift the focus to whatever I want it to be. So I can blow it completely out, and then I can bring it in by hand if I want. Um, another thing that you can do uh, is you can set all the menu items from here. So you can hit menu, hold menu, and then uh, obviously you can set it however you want. I don't usually have digital zoom on, but I'm going to show digital zoom just for this one. Oh, weird. I forgot I had manual focus on. This one's a little touchier since it's so close. But I'm going to see here. I'm going to try to get the manual focus in just perfect. Or I could just hit the auto button. It figures it out automatically. Mission detected at the front door camera. Um, so, yeah, you can handle the menu there, or you can press this mode button to change the RGB values. Uh, I usually keep mine at 27 and 84, but just to show you that you can change it on the fly. Uh, this is taking the blue down, this is bringing the blue up, and this is the red that you can take it down a little bit or bring it up as needed. So if you wanted to match cameras, you could do that. But personally, I like to keep it at 84.27, so 84.27, which is close to outdoor, but uh, is good on the skin. Anyway, uh, that shows most of this guy. One other thing I will show you is uh, the cables that come with this are kind of hard to find. They're the mini DIN 8-pin. Uh, TXRX. So it just means instead of the straight cable, it's a crossover cable. Um, you can find them at craydad.com. Uh, I have no idea where else to find. eBay is they're expensive. They're 100 bucks on. They're, you can't find them anywhere online for less than 100 bucks. But this guy actually sells them for pretty cheap if you know what you're looking for. So if, you, if you're not sure, you just ask him. He'll tell you. Uh, this is not an ad for him. This is just the only place I've found that it's pretty cheap. And these are the proper pinouts for it. So this, uh, if you go in here and you look for crossover or TXRX, and make sure it's an 8-pin mini DIN. So you just come in here and select, select this on the left side. And then you look for the ones that either say TXRX or the ones um, that have the, that say crossover somewhere inside of them. Or ask them because some of these aren't labeled properly and I asked them and uh, they, they, he actually has a lot more than he has on here. I don't know why he doesn't put uh, that they are 
um, RS-232 Visca capable, but they are, I and mean, they, um, they actually have the shell too, so uh, it grounds out and doesn't have any interference in it, so unlike some of the others, so uh, this is definitely the way to go, or if you're like me, you'll try to make your own, which is a huge waste of time and pain in the ass. But I will show you that here just so you can see it. Um, if you look online, you can find the pen outs for each one of them. And um, you can get these on eBay for really cheap from China if you want to wait a month. Uh, but these are just the 8-pin mini DIN connectors which you can solder. And I'm telling you, it is not very fun. I have a little bit of a shake and it takes forever to do these. You can use a regular um, uh, LAN cable if you want to, internet cable. Um, like a, a black one's really nice, but really it would be nice to have a, a good shielded cable for these, especially if you're running it next to an audio wire. But if you look in here, you'll see this is not fun to do. These are super small to, to, uh, to solder to. But here is one other example. Uh, the reason I like this over something like this is this doesn't have all the features that does. And it is just a lot harder to set up and figure everything out. This right here is just plug and play. All you have to do is make sure it's set up to, uh, um, on the bottom, you just make sure it's set up to RS-232C and 9600 baud. Uh, per second, which is these two dip switches. You just make sure they are all down, which they come standard like that unless someone changed it. Um, so you just plug in that and plug in that and you can daisy chain up to seven cameras and have all the memory in it. Oh, and another th thought is always make sure you do memory one uh, if you want to change specific things like in the menu, the white balance. Uh, I don't know if it's white balance, but there's some, there's some specific ones that the other ones don't remember. Uh, like these cameras only do six. Uh, some of the other cameras, uh, like this one over here, have, but this one's still $2,000. and It's still in production, but it's really expensive. But it has, I think, up to 16, so you just have to hit shift for those presets. Another cool thing about this is this particular one versus other ones is you can do uh, reverse direction. So if you hold this button down, L and R direction, uh, the camera, if you have it flipped upside and down, uh, this, instead of going left, it'll go right when you go that way. So that's pretty nifty too. Um, and last but not least, here are the cameras that uh, it is compatible with. Um, these are the ones that are still in uh, production right now. Um, I highly suggest, uh, if, if you want to go crazy, you're going to want to get the BRCs, but that's up in the $5,000 to $10,000 range. But this one, the SRG120DH, is really, really, really nice. It's like the PTC Optics one. Um, but you need a good five feet, six feet in between you and whatever you're working with if you want to use the optical zoom, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So, um, and this is the one I, I was just showing you, the SRG300H. This one's, this DH one you can get for 500 bucks if you're lucky, but normally it's around six or 700 bucks on eBay, but you can buy it brand new still. Um, this one you can buy brand new still too for about 2500 I think, or you can get it on eBay used for like $1,700. Um, one of the best buys for your money is this one, the EVI HD7V. 
and it's for multiple reasons. Um, the optical zoom on it, you can get, you can be full blown all the way out um, with the longest range possible on the optical, and you can have an item as close as less than one foot on it, so you can completely blow the background out in a small studio and you can have the items up to, I mean, super close to it. So that's what I use for most of my stuff, like especially on the side of the table. Um, I don't know, I, I haven't showed you that, but. Um, and then this EVI H100, there's a H100V that's not shown on here. It's only 30 frames per second, but it's kind of super slow, but it does have a little tiny bit better saturation than the 7V. Um, but overall, this HD7V does really, really good. You can get pick these up for like two or three hundred bucks on eBay. Um, the only issue with these is uh, that you might get one with a noisy fan on the back. Most of these cameras don't have, but this has like the smallest fan in the world on the very back. And I'll show you that. Before I show you that, this EVI HD3V is 720. I wouldn't get it if I were you, if you have the choice for the 7D or the 7V. And the EVI HD1, uh, it has um, SDI out. And if you're getting this for the A10 Mini, obviously you don't want to do that. But this one, uh, from what I understand from a lot of other videos, and the reason I didn't get it is because it has the 720 sensor and they upscale it to 1080, which is not as clear as this one. So get this one. Oh, also this one, uh, if you look up Radvision, R-A-D-V-I-S-I-O-N, you can pick up some cheap ones uh, with the Radvision. Cisco made a Radvision system that uh, these came standard with. I think it's like the X-T5000 or something like that. But you can probably pick up the whole system for like 200 bucks with the codex and everything. Not that you'll use it, but those cameras are usually in pristine condition too. And But what I was going to say about the smallest camera in the world, if you're anything like a DIY guy like me or anything like a DIY guy like me or hobbyist, um, you really you can remove that, um, that little tiny uh, fan on the top. Here, maybe you can see it here. Five. I don't know if you can see it or not in there. But it's right there. Um, and there's a couple screws just to remove this top shell. But you can just use an aluminum heat sink and put it straight on that IC unit. And it works all day long. Uh, I should have had one out to show you. but Or you could just cut this off and unconnect. There's a con easy connection for this camera on there, or for this uh, fan. And then just uh, use one of those um, uh, they're gray, sticky type um, uh, thermal thermal paste, but they call it thermal tape. And so you can just use that thermal tape and put a, a aluminum heat sink on top of that, and it'll run 24/7 with that with a decent sized heat sink, and you don't have to worry about this fan. But like I said, sometimes you can get a fan that's kind of noisy on these guys, uh, especially since they're getting older. Um, but every single one that I've got works perfect and the color is perfect so there's no problem in that area uh, so you can get the whole point of this is you can get super buttery pans not move out of your seat by picking up one of these and you can get up to you know seven of these to connect to this especially if you have the a10 mini uh, extreme because you can stick eight cameras on that you can use this whole thing. You don't have to worry about going into your computer or using a touch screen and not knowing where stuff is. This works so good just sitting over on the right side for me. I absolutely love it. I just started using these, but unbelievable how good this works. I love it, love it, love it. I can't recommend it more. Um, so good luck with that. Uh, hopefully you can... Uh, get as much out of it as I did. Like I said, this is a good find. There's an RMIP500 that is super expensive that I have not used. Um, but if you don't want to buy this, this, the uh, 
remote that comes with it where you can get it off eBay for like 10 bucks works really good. You can select one, two, or three cameras, and it has pretty much all the same features this does. But you really can't get the feel for the zoom and the move and all that stuff. And you have to be pointed directly at the camera, so if it's up, you got it. Um, if you can afford it, get this. But I would get the PTZ cameras and like one of them, like this one, and use this just so you can see how it looks and how it can set up with your system. That way you're only paying 200 bucks. If you're buying a Panasonic GH5 or a Sony, you know, one of the new ZV1s or ZVE10s, you're spending a thousand dollars right there. If, and you have to get up and change all those settings and that's only one camera. What if you spent a thousand dollars, you didn't have to get up and you had fluent panning and zooming, optical zoom. Amazing system. Uh, it is outdated and not sold anymore, but it, it has crystal clear. Uh, you know, uh, 60 frames per second, 1080p, 60p, and it is super clear. And, and you can set all of these different positions beforehand. So pretty amazing, pretty good stuff. So I highly recommend this guy. Um, there are the Ada uh, CC, I think it's CC USB or something like that. It's a little connector that you can do RS-232, which works just fine with these guys. Um, there's a bunch of little tiny, uh, oh, I think what's, what's it called? I think it's the Huddle app or something like that. Um, but there's quite a few of them that you can use with the Visca, but you need to be careful. There are some Visca um, RS-232 um, softwares out there that have viruses because uh, people are, you know, desperate and trying to find some of these old software. So. I would suggest staying away from those guys. Um, and last but not least, let me see if I can find it here. Anyway, I think PTZ Optics also has a software that you can use for that. Um, unfortunately, the Ada one, A-I-D-A, -A, is, is, doesn't allow you to do um, shortcuts on the keyboard, otherwise it would be pretty cool. Um, but you can stick it on a, a touchpad, like an uh, iPad or a uh, Surface or an Android tablet, and you're able to actually touch the, the different areas to set up different positions, focus, uh, RNGB values, um, and white balance. So anyways, this video is getting long. Uh, so many questions if you have them about this guy. It does have some more features that I didn't get into, but the most important features are, you know, just sitting here having the ability to control multiple cameras with the touch of a button, um, not having to bring up software anywhere or setting up. You just turn all the power on. Um, it, oh, that's another thing. Uh, if you're like me and you like set it up with your home system to where the your whole home studio comes up with with one power switch. Um, then this also, you know, you you can when you turn the power on, everything comes on automatic. Same thing with the cameras, so you don't have to worry about going and switching everything on and off. Okay, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. All right.